Hey guys, welcome back to Reserved Investments on YouTube. So please forgive my appearance, I'm really not feeling well. I've had the stomach flu now for about 48 hours, and as a result, uploads and new videos being produced for this channel have been few and far in between. Um, I will have some content coming over the next week, so please watch for it. But I just wanted to do a quick channel update because I was recently interviewed for an article for the New York Times that just premiered today, in the US at least, entitled, Collectors are spending thousands on video games they will never play. Now this article goes in depth in what's happening in the speculative market for graded WADA video games. I encourage all of you to read it. I really encourage a lot of people acting in this market to read this article as well. In fact, I'm going to put a link to this particular article in the video description of this particular video. Now, if you do want to read it and you don't want to click on the link that I'm going to provide, all you got to do is Google New York Times collectors are spending thousands on video games they will never play. This was a very, very good article that was written by Jason Bailey of the New York Times. He reached out to me sometime, I want to say, in November of last year, November 2019. I got contacted by him that he wanted to do an article on this topic and he had come across a lot of the articles that I wrote for Antiques and Auction News where I was warning people about the speculative bubble developing in vintage video games and graded video games and those articles caught his eye so he took the time to call me and we had a 50 minute conversation about this topic. Now if you read this article you're going to notice that literally only three sentences from that conversation were chosen to be quoted in this particular piece which I expected. Because let's be honest, you may have a 50 or a 60 or a two hour long conversation with somebody. You're not going to be able to write a what, 1200, 1800 word article and put everything that you spoke about with that person in that particular piece. Now, to be fair to Jason, Jason did an excellent job showing all the different viewpoints on this particular topic. There's not only guys like me in this particular article who are the quote unquote contrarians. He also interviewed a lot of collectors, even dealers. Now the one thing that I will say, and I'm not going to touch on this too much in this particular video, I would caution anybody out there who's entering the antiques and collectibles trade with a financial mindset in tow to trust a quote unquote traditional dealer to tell you where you should put your money, financially speaking, long term when it's invested in the antiques and collectibles trade. Most dealers have a bias. Whether or not you realize that, or even if you disagree with that principle, that is the truth. Every dealer I know has a subconscious bias in the antiques and collectibles trade. Now there's a lot of people out there that will disagree with me. I'm sure this video may anger some people out there for me having that particular take on the market as a whole, but it's the truth. It's just like auction houses, guys. I've said this before. Auction houses, by promoting their products, are not doing anything wrong. The problem is there's a thin line between advertising and market manipulation. And we already have WADA that has crossed that line several times where I consider some of their conduct in the secondary market to be a little unethical, in my opinion. Other people can disagree with that assessment. I can tell you there's going to be other people that are better versed, even better than me, in the antiques and collectibles trade, who are going to be commenting on this topic as a whole in the near future. So I'm going to reserve that argument for when those particular individuals start commenting on this topic as well. Then I can kind of do a video where I point out the articles that they've written and also compare it to my feedback and commentary of what I've been saying all along. Those of you that really think, though, that this market is not overblown at present time, I encourage you to please read this article. There are people buying this stuff where they have no viable price stability, no value to attribute to these games. And it's just like, yeah, I'll give you seven grand for that. Well, how are you getting that it's valued at $7,000? Look, I got another video that I'm gonna be doing shortly on what I bought at the recent fun auction sales through Heritage. All these items that I'm holding up right now, these items have a track record going back decades in most cases where I can track the value of each of these collectibles on the marketplace. Graded video games do not have that. 
and there's people that love to come in my comment section and they say, hey, Sean, you don't know what you're talking about. We had VGA. VGA never had the market penetration and or the market manipulation that WADA has right now through working with high-end auction houses. I'm also going to point out something else in this article that should be curious to some of you speculators out there. In the article, it states, Heritage Auctions sees great at video games as the next big collectible. Ironically, though, Christie's and Sotheby's are not following suit. Now, if this is the greatest collectible that's going to be next on the pike, how come Sotheby's and Christie's is not entering the market in mass? Believe it or not, Sotheby's was in the comic market, the vintage comic book market, before Heritage. Sotheby's has been selling and dealing coins for who knows how long. So is Christie's. Now, really, to be honest, right now, their bread and butter, both Christie's and Sotheby's, is higher-end antiques and art. That's true. But they also are involved in the collectibles marketplace as well. So for those of you guys out there that think this is the next big thing, sky's the limit, no one's going to lose money, everyone's going to make money on this stuff, you can pay whatever and just sell it to the next greater fool down the line, a lot of the antique and collectibles trade disagrees with you. So just be cautious. I just wanted to film a video on this to bring awareness to this article because I thought Jason Bailey did a great job at presenting all sides of the proverbial coin, or I should say all sides of the proverbial game box because we're talking about great at video games. Ha ha. Well, anyway, I just think that the market is so overblown or people are getting enmeshed into it. It reminds me a lot of what happened back during the boom in Magic the Gathering cards when Rudy first appeared or even some of the vintage comic books back when CGC appeared on the scene that literally shot up in value almost overnight and a lot of them, and nobody wants to talk about this, dropped in value because they found out later, well gee, these 20 cent Marvel comic books from 1973 or 1972 aren't as rare in air condition as we thought they were. The market that thought this 9.4 copy of whatever should be selling for $500 just create correct it. Now there's people out there that paid $500 for that comic book that if they go to sell it, they're going to get 100 150 bucks back on the open market. Be very careful playing in these markets, guys. There's a reason why I like, for long-term investing, non-speculative items. And you can argue any collectible commodity, antique collectible, to a certain extent, it is speculative. Its value is derived by, quote-unquote, collectible value more than any intrinsic value. Now, that said, I do not tend to go after speculative items for long-term investing. I'm not touching great at video games with a time horizon of 10 or 20 years. It's not going to work out for most people. Again, the people that this is going to work out for the most are the ones that are already involved in market manipulation. They understand the market. They have the means and the money to go after what is truly ultra rare and what is going to be sought after in the future. The average Timmy or the average Poindexter out there who's going to put a five dollars or $10,000 graded video game on their credit card with hopes of making it big in that market is taking an insane risk, in my opinion. One of the things that I can tell you from the consulting business I do in the antiques and collectibles trade, speculators will always focus on that one item that they paid like $1,000 for that went to $3,000. But what they're not going to talk to you about is the other 10 items that they paid $500 or $1,000 or $2,000 for that all dropped to $100 or $200. It's amazing how that works. They have a selective mindset that allows them to engage in their mental practice, which is pretty much speculating in these markets that they think is going to pay off long term. So in conclusion, guys, please read this article. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Maybe you don't agree with me. There's a lot of people that come on this channel that love to troll me or they love to start little micro arguments that I'm starting to be aware of or they like to say stuff like, you don't know what you're talking about in this. This is the next big thing. VGA has been around for 10, 20 years. 
Um, VGA has not been around for 20 years, by the way, for the people that are putting that in my comment section. You need to go back and do some unbiased research. And you also have to understand that VGA, as much as I respect them, they're a part of AFA, no problems with neither company, they're very reputable. They did not have the market penetration that Wattic Games now has. So just keep that in mind when you're navigating this market. I want to know your thoughts on this particular article, though. Who in this particular piece do you think is wrong? Who do you think is correct? And who do you agree with or disagree with? Please let me know in the comments section below. Thanks, guys, and have a good night.